In one of my music theory courses from when I was studying for my doctorate, I read this quote by Harold Bloom. The meaning of a poem can only be a poem, but another poem, a poem not itself. Basically, to describe or analyze art, the best way to do that is with another piece of art. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Hey everybody, I'm Michael and this is my review of Breath of Fire 2. Breath of Fire 2 was developed and published by Capcom. It was also released in 1994. It was produced by Tokoro Fujiwara, who also worked on Sweet Home, DuckTales, and many other Disney properties, many of the Mega Man games, and the first Resident Evil game, along with the first Breath of Fire game. If you've seen my first Breath of Fire review, you might remember that I found that game charming and it included great graphics and designs, but I overall found the game dull and it mostly just made me excited for what the franchise would be later in its life. Speaking of graphics, this game's graphics are so good. Everything fits together so well, and the battle graphics especially are both smooth and fluid while also being exciting. But when it comes to the battles, they're not my favorite part of the game. There are a few too many random battles. I do like the little monster friend in the main menu that tells you how many battles will be on that screen, but there are overall still too many. The game is a bit too grindy. I'm glad there's an auto battle option though, and I'm glad that the boss got back up thing from Breath of Fire 1 is gone. Speaking of the bosses though, they look really cool in battle. The battle sprites in general, heroes and villains alike, overall look really cool. There are way more standout good designs than there are standout less good designs, and I don't think that any of them are bad. Ryu is even, um, kinda hot in his battle sprite. The map sprites are also really good, but since they're a bit smaller than the battle sprites, they have to be a little bit less detailed. And some of them look a little silly, like Nina and her I'd like to speak to the manager hair in the map sprite. At least the character designs are overall not sexist and are overall interesting. The characters themselves are overall pretty good, but not great. The heroes are pretty strong, but the silent protagonist Ryu is pretty dull. Sten and Jean are my least favorite characters, but everyone else is a pretty strong five. Special shout out to Spar, the gender fluid icon, who, depending on which shaman you have Spar merged with, will be either male or female. Speaking of the shamans, they're a fun gameplay element. You can fuse the six elemental shamans one or two at a time with your party members, which will give them stat boosts for certain stats, or even completely change the character's appearance. This feels like a callback to Karn's fusion spells in Breath of Fire 1, and the mix and match element of the shamans feels like the idea of the genes in Ryo's dragon transformations in Breath of Fire 3. I also like how the shamans and other people can move to a new town that you create. You can get some of the best weapons and armor in the game by asking the right NPCs to move to your town where they open up shop. The town design of all the towns is generally really strong too, and the towns feel pretty significantly different from each other. Speaking of NPCs, they're very strong in this game. I like how you learn more about the characters like Ray and Patty as the game goes on. Mina has some pretty surprising character moments, and Pitape and Daisy are fun family member foils for Jean and Rand, respectively. Claris and Taiga are especially strong characters, but it's a shame that the translation doesn't support their characters super well. The dialogue is weak in this game because of this poor translation. Capcom had Squaresoft handle the translation for Breath of Fire 1, but thought they'd go on their own with the translation of Breath of Fire 2. There are some spots where it's incredibly difficult to follow what's going on in the script. Some spots that should hit hard in the story fall flat because of the translation. It can also be really hard to tell what any weapons, pieces of armor, or items are supposed to be because of the translation and severe truncation of the text in the menus. The story itself is decently strong, but most of that strength is due to the well-fleshed-out world. 
the day-night cycle is very cool and it's fun that certain things only happen in the day or nighttime, but this effect ends up being slightly underutilized. While you're waiting for night to become day, if for some reason you aren't using Ryu's Time Orb spell, wandering around the map feels really good. On the map, you can also use each character's special map skill, similar to Breath of Fire 1. The skills are all fun, but they're varying levels of useful. Blue's skill is hilarious though if you use her skill in the hunting minigame. The hunting and fishing minigames themselves are really fun though. Also, while you're on the world map, you can listen to a lot of this game's best music. This game has different music at different points on the world map, which is something you don't see a lot in other games. The music itself is a bit of a sore point though. While the instrument sounds themselves are very strong, many of the compositions themselves are pretty weak. Some are great, but some are awful, <laughs> largely because the loops are too short. I calculated an average of about 34 seconds for the average loop. If this is a song you hear a lot, like the town music or the dungeon music, it gets really old really fast. At least the battle music is a lot of fun. And you can't have battles without some villains. The villains in this game are really strong. Almost all of them are demons that have been taking the place of regular people in the world. They each have different personalities as regular people and different methods for sowing pain and chaos in the world, which works for all of them as a whole. The big boss demon is kind of a silly character, especially in his dialogue, but he and his highest level underlings feel like real threats. The demon's methods for bringing a little more evil into the world make this game seem pretty dark, especially compared to its lighter elements. These dark elements play on a few tropes but they're overall pretty well done. What makes it all work is the way that the characters react to what's going on. Basically, these characters end up feeling pretty real. A lot of the lighter moments that I just talked about are heightened by the sound effects. For instance, pretty early in the game, Ryu needs to sneak Bo out of town without anyone seeing him, and he stuffs him into a garbage can to do that. This is animated as a garbage can hopping along behind Ryu out of the town on the world map and across a mountain to reach a hiding spot. The animation of the hopping trash can and the sound effect of it are so charming and fun. You get cute and interesting and scary designs in quick succession throughout this game, all designed by Yoshinori Kawano. Aside from the things that I already talked about with the design, the monsters look great, the dungeons are overall pretty fun, and are a huge step up from Breath of Fire 1's dungeons. I hope you've noticed that this review has been a bit disjointed. Friends, this was on purpose. The pacing of this game is similarly kind of a mess. Remember at the beginning when I quoted Harold Bloom? That was me trying to put that into practice. See? I do art. I'm an artist. Thank you. Anyway, so much of this game seems to jump around. We have to find the real thief so we can clear Bo's name. Meanwhile, let's rescue Cat, rescue Mina, save the people of Capitan, help Jean prove that he's the real prince, all while backtracking back and forth across the world map until someone finally learns the warp spell. Sometimes story events pile up on each other, one after another. Sometimes it feels like nothing happens for long stretches of the game. But I don't absolutely hate that about this game. In a way, it's actually kind of charming. And this trend in storytelling definitely continues in the coming Breath of Fire games. Weirdly, the scoring came out the same as Live Alive scoring. The formula spat out an 87% for the game. That also just happens to be the, what I think the game deserves. So averaging those two scores gives this game an 87, just like Live Alive. Here's where the game sits in the ranking of all the games that we've reviewed so far. Just like Live Alive, this is a game that you should seek out if you like RPGs. You can get an SNES cartridge, which is how I played it, or you can play it on the Switch Online's SNES platform. What do you think of Breath of Fire 2? Do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments below. Give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a pity like if you didn't like it. Subscribe to hear us say a lot of words about media, especially video games and music. Here to my side is another video that YouTube thinks you might like. Maintain your groovy selves. See you next time.